Hey everyone, and thank you for stopping in my channel. Um, I just want to do a quick review on my 2018 Kawasaki Arrow. Uh, it's a Vulcan model. It's, uh, it's been around for a long time. Um, they've been making the Arrow since until or since about 2011. Um, is the baby brother to the Kawasaki Voyager. Um, the only thing different about that is the Voyager's got the uh, the tour pack on it. Um, I just want to do a review. Um, I got about 5,400 miles on it now. I've had it for about eight months and um, when I was researching uh, Vulcan Vaqueros there really wasn't too much on the 2018s. There was uh, simple walk around videos uh, from the dealership uh, on the 2018s. Um, granted, uh, from 2011 until now, uh, nothing has really changed on the Vicaros except for uh, uh, the ABS, which they added in 2015, I believe. Um, so, I guess I'm just going to go over the pros and cons about the bike and uh, how I feel about it after uh, 5,400 miles. Okay, so one of the first things I want to talk about is the overall performance of the bike. The bike is a 1700cc, 103 cubic inch fuel injected engine V twin. Um, I added Cobra Tri Flows, which are a slip on exhaust. Um, after doing research and uh, looking at videos, I kind of made my decision on uh, picking these up. The price was fairly reasonable. I think it cost me about 550 bucks uh, shipped to my door. I actually picked it up brand new off of eBay. Um, super simple to install and they are very deep. They're not loud, they're not obnoxious unless you want them to be. Um, otherwise, they got a very deep, thunderous sound. Um, I, you go on YouTube, you look up videos, honestly, all the videos I watched on this exhaust, just a word of advice, um, exhaust videos don't do any justice. So you really cannot decide on what exhaust you want for your bike based off a YouTube video because after I installed these and started it up it sounded nothing like the video that I watched videos I should say that I watched on uh, this exhaust um, I was still happy still very happy with this exhaust I, I don't know if I'm gonna change it out uh, but um, I would recommend getting these pipes if you're looking for a, a really deep thunderous sound that's pleasant on the ears while cruising and it will bark when you accelerate. Along with the exhaust I, uh, I did a K&N air filter. It's a drop-in filter in the stock air box. Um, I also uh, sent my ECU out to Ivan's Performance who uh, does custom tunes for these bikes. Um, I'll get into that in uh, a little bit um, on the tune and why you should get it. Uh, but all together, uh, I'm very pleased with the performance. It's, uh, it's quick off the line. It's obviously not a super bike, so you're not going to expect super high speeds, but you don't buy this bike for speed. Uh, you, you buy it for comfort. You buy it for the beggar life. That's, that's what you buy it for. Um, so as far as performance, um, stock, the bike is okay. Okay at best. Um, you're not going to expect a lot out of the bike uh, with the stock, stock everything. I'm talking stock pipe, stock tune, stock air filter, all that jazz. Um, I didn't really ride it. Actually, let me take that back. 
I didn't ride it stock. I, I rode it off the trailer when I bought the bike and threw it into my garage. Because again, I bought this bike in January. It was in the middle of winter. I live in Wisconsin. So do the math, obviously uh, it's not riding season at that time. So, um, but I did do a lot of research and uh, everybody basically told me, you know, you, you gotta buy, you gotta get this thing tuned. Um, go on YouTube and search for chicken fried blowout. There's a guy from Colorado, um, shout out to him. He does a really good explanation on the Ivan's tune and why you should get it. Um, and honestly, you go to any forum, anything to do with the Carol, and you bring up Ivan's tune, and they're just going to tell you to shut up and get it. Basically, it just smooths everything out, fixes the the quirks and the and the little bitty problems that uh, Kawasaki didn't quite get figured out, and the restrictions basically that they had to set for. Uh, emission standards. The suspension, uh, the rear suspension has a air shock. Uh, you can adjust the dampening and recoil on it. Um, it does have uh, two air nozzles under the seat here. Uh, we'll pop the seat off and uh, there's the two nozzles there. You can uh, fill and uh, decrease air, uh, the air shocks that way. Um, it's got three inches of suspension travel in the rear two and a half in the front. Um, really comfortable. I haven't had any complaints with the suspension. Um, it does sit at uh, the stock height of the Vicaro, or I'm sorry, the, the Voyager, um, which is gonna make you sit a little bit taller. Uh, a lot of people that are shorter, I'm 6'1". People that are about 5'10", they're gonna have a little issues reaching the, uh, the ground. Um, but, so they usually, lower the bike uh, but I feel like lowering the bike for me that would just compromise on the, uh, the quality of the ride and I, I'm not about that at all so I haven't touched the suspension at all I have no plans on doing so the gauge cluster one of my favorite things about the bike um, for 2015 and up they started blacking out the chrome rings that go around each gauge and uh, around this gauge here. Uh, they basically blacked out a lot of things um, starting in 2015. The gauges on here are great. I love the gauges. Um, as far as your gauges go, fuel, speedometer, tack, your temperature gauge, this is your odometer and it shows you your, uh, how many miles you got left to go on the tank. Time up here is your uh, gear, gear indicator. Um, it's the first time I've ever had that on a motorcycle. It is, it's awesome. If you haven't had a gear indicator before on a bike, um, you know, screw what they say about, oh, you should know what gear you're in. That's just, you know, lazy biking. Honestly, no. When you got six gears, it's nice to know what gear you're in at all times. Um, it's helped me out a lot, and it helps you miss shift as well. Speakers in here I ripped out and I put in a Kicker Comp Series. Um, to be honest, I'm not really happy with them. I'm probably end up changing them out, but they're 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 doing well, well enough. Um, I got it hooked up to a 200 watt boss amp that I have tucked inside the fairing here. Um, the stock speakers are a joke. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. If, you, if you're just, I'm a bit of an audiophile, so the stock speakers were not um, not adequate for me at all. So I swapped those out. And they've been doing pretty good. They sound the best music coming off my phone um, and what's helped me with that is the Ciro 3D mount. Um, I went through two different uh, cell phone mounts and this ended up being the best one. My brother, uh, he's got a Harley and these are technically made for Harleys. He, 
he bought this and he showed me it and I thought it was amazing. It is super sturdy. It's actually a perch mount and perch mount means that they actually uh, attach right here. So um, the, the hardware that came with this kit, um, they included metric bolts, but they did not work for this Vaquero. So what I had to do is I just had to run down to my local hardware store and buy some new bolts, stuck them in there, and it works great. Got these little spacers here to help you mount it uh, uh, upright, perfect, and it is super sturdy. You, you put your phone in there, clamp it down, it ain't gonna go anywhere. And I like the position where it's at. So if you're looking for a, a phone mount, Zero 3D, Highly, highly recommend it. Probably one of the best phone mounts you can get. I added uh, an LED headlight. Um, stock headlight, don't know much about it, didn't care for it, I didn't like the look of it. Uh, so I went to Engineered Adapters. A guy named Randy Rooster runs the company and he makes brackets for uh, a lot of different things and adapters for Vicaro and Voyager. And uh, what he does is he makes a, an adapter that will allow you to take a Harley Daymaker, any brand, and mount it to the Carol. Um, there's ways that you can do it without um, having to buy the adapter. You gotta snap off some things and basically makes the installation irreversible. I did not want that. I want, I want the option to go back to stock if I have to. So I ended up buying the adapter that route uh, with the black bike in this black daymaker it is uh, it makes the bike look so much better uh, maybe down the road I'm gonna replace these louvers with the uh, daymaker auxiliary lights um, that's gonna be costly you gotta buy the adapters from Kawasaki plus the adapters from Randy and you have to buy the daymakers themselves so you're you're looking at uh, Probably over $300 just, just to do auxiliary headlights. Uh, so that's going to be down the road. I did take the turn signal bar and I dipped the plastic dip. I dipped these black. Uh, it turned out really good until I started messing around with stuff, taking the fender, or the, uh, the fairing off a few times to deal with the amp because uh, the uh, remote wire kept falling out. So I had to take this off a few times. And because of that, I ended up nicking this up a little bit. So. This is probably going to get redone eventually, but it does look a lot better black than it does chrome. And uh, so, I, and this, these just come out. I got two bolts here that uh, you unscrew and this drops down. I recommend you taking the entire fairing off because the wiring is kind of stuffed up into the fairing as far as where you unplug it. So, uh, next time you take your fairing off, you plan on doing something like that. Um, a lot of guys, they do custom blinkers and all that. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that shit. Maybe not right now. Maybe later down the road. But I think what I did with that now, it, it looks good. And I'm going to eventually go down into the rear here and dip these as well. Um, I wasn't really quite sure how to take this whole unit apart. But after doing some research, I figured it out. And, you know, I think next spring I'm going to dip those black too. Probably notice that the windshield is different. Um, this is a what is it now? I'm having a brain fart. Slipstream, slipstreamer windshield. Get these on Amazon or eBay. They cost about 45, 50 bucks. And then, uh, well, the stinted one might be different. Uh, I think this is the 10 inch version. Uh, don't quote me. I do believe that this. I think they measure it from here. So, uh, yeah, I think this is the 10 inch. Um, it's a cheap windshield, but it works. It looks decent. A lot of guys go this row because they just feel like spending, guys like me anyway, they, spending $250 on a windshield is just ridiculous. Uh, it's not, I've already broken one of these before I was pushing on this and the corner just snapped. Uh, so, they're not the most durable. When you put it on and you don't touch it, they're great. They work, they work just fine. So, um, 
highly recommend getting rid of that completely useless windshield that comes with the the Picaro from stock and just get something different here. I added a cup holder, it's from Cruiser Caddy. Um, not the best fitment, uh, but it works. Uh, I got it in black, matches the rest of the bike, kind of just hides itself onto the handlebars, honestly. It, just, it doesn't really stick out. That's what I like about it, and it works. And some guys are like, cup holder. What the hell do you need a cup holder on a bike for? What are you gonna add next to TV? Honestly, you know what? When you're on a long trip, hydration is important. You gotta stay hydrated in the summer, because, I mean, the wind's drying you out, you're sweating. Uh, it's always good to have a bottle of water with you, so highly recommend you adding uh, a cup holder. And uh, having it easily accessible, riding down the road on the highway, just taking a drink while you're doing that, staying hydrated, its that's key. Overall, I'm very happy with the Vicaro. I love the tough retro design from the front fairing to the saddlebags. The black metallic paint with the green accents really stand out from the rest of the other baggers. If you put this cowboy against its domestic rivals such as Harley Road Glide, you'll quickly see why the Vicaro is the best choice for your money. You can easily pick up a low mileage Vicaro for 8 to 10 grand, which is almost half of what Harley costs, without any compromise in quality or craftsmanship. And this I can assure you and I'll fight you to defend that statement. I haven't had any issues with this bike, no trips back to the dealer to sort out issues. I've changed oil myself after I went through the break-in period and I installed all the mods myself without any worries about the warranty. All it needs now is a rear tire in the spring. Sadly, the stock tire doesn't exactly last long, so that was something I was prepared for. The Vaquero does have a weak spot when it comes to aftermarket accessories and swag. But what it does have is a strong, very engaged, and very smart community of owners. Some of those owners have created their own side business, creating aftermarket accessories for a reasonable price. In fact, I'll be getting a backrest in spring from a gentleman who recently started fabricating them himself. From what I hear, they're the cat's ass. I've made over a half dozen trips in the great state of Wisconsin this summer. The ride has been great every single time. My girlfriend, who loves to ride with me, so far hasn't had any complaints about the stock seat or the pegs, but she's small, so that might contribute to that. Between the both of us, the ride on the Vicaro has been smooth and forgiving. All in all, after 5,400 miles, I have zero buyer's remorse, and I cannot wait to get out on the open road next summer, hopefully taking a trip out west, or maybe a trip around Lake Michigan. But whatever awaits me, I know that my Vicaro will be there ready to go. So that wraps up my review. Uh, thanks for stopping and checking out my video. Um, I hope this video did help you in your decision on uh, purchasing a Vicaro. Um, I don't normally do reviews on things and I don't normally do YouTube videos so this might be the start of something new for me. Um, I felt like I needed to do a review on my bike because uh, I do love the bike and there isn't a lot on uh, YouTube about the 2018s themselves. Uh, so I felt like I needed to contribute, do my part, and help anybody that may have questions about the bike. And uh, maybe you need an idea about what you'd like to do with your bike. Uh, any questions, go ahead and comment, and uh, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them the best that I can. Uh, if you did like the video, a thumbs up rating would be great. 
can't really tell you to subscribe because honestly I don't know if I'm going to make any more videos. Um, I'd like to and maybe that's something I'll get into but uh, we'll have to see. Um, in a couple of weeks this is going to go into hibernation and uh, um, that's going to be it for me until spring. Uh, I'll, I'll have to maybe catch up with you in about five months. So uh, thanks for watching my video. Take care. Ride safe.